welcome back to Messy Girl Crafts. My name is Ashley, and if this is your first time here, I'm so happy to have you. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, today we are going to be doing a whip and chat. So um, I've, again, listened to a lot of your feedback, and I heard that you guys thought this angle might be fun. So I'm going to try it. Uh, I think this is cool because you can see me working on the kit. You can also see my face. Um, and it was really easy to set up this way. Honestly, setting this up was way easier than when I have to set up like the whole top down view and everything. So please in the comments, provide your feedback on what you think about this. Um, I'm gonna try it out and if you guys like it, I'll keep doing it this way. If I feel like there's kind of a split decision, some people prefer to see my close up work, some people prefer this version, maybe I can swap in and out during different whip and chats. Um, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about this kit. So again, this is in Santorini by Ivalio Nikolov, and I am doing this kit as a gift for my in-laws. So my husband's father and his wife, they, um, they went on their honeymoon to, uh, Greece. I don't think it was a, I don't remember if it was a cruise or not. It might have been a Greece, like a cruise to Greece. Um, either way, Santorini was, a uh, his wife's favorite location. So I wanted to do this for them for Christmas. After I finish it, I'll definitely be framing it and getting it all nice for them. And then I'll be giving it to them during the holiday season. But let me tell you, I, I don't know how much of this you can see, but I have been blowing through this kit. Like it's a round, so it's obviously going to work up faster than a square. But I just really feel like I don't know if it's just because I really love the subject matter or the colors are so beautiful, but I have been blazing through this kit. So um, literally all I have left to do is this, this section, this is it. And then I'm done. So I don't know if I'll get it all done in this video. I have this little section here saved off because I would like to do a little time lapse, maybe do like a, a YouTube short or something, or maybe put it on my Messy Girl Crafts Instagram. So I'm going to save this little section to maybe do a time lapse later, but this big section, it's a lot of color blocking. So I didn't want to only do a small section today because then I feel like the video would be really short because the color blocking goes faster. So I blocked off this nice big hunk of chunk section to talk with you guys today while I'm working on it. And um, I... Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited about this new angle. I'm excited I'm figuring out my camera. I feel like good things are happening. Um, so anyway, what am I working with today? Again, I talked about the canvas, round, almost done with it. I have on my light pad underneath here. It's on the highest setting. It's the Diamond Art Club light pad. I love it. I highly recommend it, even though it's like daytime outside. I have my window open to get some natural light. But even though it's daytime, I still feel like this is extremely helpful, especially with rounds. Because with these, like with the round kits, there's these guide circles under every single symbol. And I feel like when there's shadowing because of my hand or just whatever, I feel like sometimes I don't place as straight without the light pad really shining through the bottom of my canvas and showing me where the guide circles are so that I know I'm covering the guide circles every time. And especially because when you're using um, a multi-placer, sometimes you have to kind of readjust and like poke and fix your rounds. And so being able to, again, see underneath to see that you've really covered all the guide circles, I think it's really helpful. So I have my light pad on, hopefully on camera, it doesn't bother you guys too much. I tried to do a little bit of a test video to see if I liked it and I think I do like it. So again, we're all learning here, uh, but I'm excited. So have my light pad. Also in the last video you guys just saw, you saw me unbox a bunch of goodies from uh, Tracy's DP World and Nix's Notions and a couple little Diamond Art Club cuties. So I have some stuff to work with today. I have two, well I, I have, I got three trays but I only have two out because I'm not sure which one I want to work on. These two trays are from Nix's Notions. Um, this one is purple and it goes pink with heat and this one is green and it goes yellow with heat. So um when I did the first video, when I did the video of unboxing these, I was on the struggle bus, like pretty much the entire video trying to figure out how to get these to change colors. Because I thought, oh, I live in Florida. Clearly these are in hot mode. Like these are warm. So I need to get them cold to make them change colors. I put them in my freezer. I tried to like do all these things to get them to get cold. And I finally went on to the Etsy store because I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to email Nix's notions and be like, why are my things not working? You know, I was like, clearly I think this has to be user error. It has to be my fault. So I go and I look at my invoice. I'm like, okay, these are definitely the color changing, uh, 
trays and I definitely got the right thing I ordered. I just am not figuring this out. So finally, at the end of the last video, I sat on them and it worked because it wasn't that they were in hot mode. It was that they were in cold mode because my house is so freaking cold because my husband keeps this house at like 70 to 75 degrees. So my, and I have, I'm like, I had the fan on and the air conditioning was blowing. I have a vent like right above me that like hits me right like where I work. So they were in cold mode. That's why they weren't working. I bet you if I took these outside, like in the Florida heat, they would change colors in an instant. But I just thought it was so funny. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below. Please go back and watch the video of me opening all these goodies because that was hilarious watching me realize that they were not in fact needing to get colder, they were needing to get warmer to transition. Here, I'll even show you. I'll stick, this one will probably show better. I'm just gonna stick this under my leg and that way you guys can see the color change. Um, but I'll be working with both of these trays today. I um. After I unboxed these, I did a little bit of this kit. That's why you can see there's a little bit of work already done here. I was just practicing with the trays and they work really well. You'll see in the video, I'll use them the whole video. So that's exciting. So I know that these work well, but I'll use them in this video. And then also from Nix's Notions, I purchased this cute little um, putty. Um, we named him Samuel. Again, if you haven't watched the last video, go watch it. But this is Samuel. And Samuel is, it's actually sugar cookie. So when I looked back on my invoice, it's not gingerbread scented, it's sugar cookie scented. But I guess, whatever, it's cookie, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's definitely sugar cookie. I just saw gingerbread and decided it was gingerbread and but no it's it's called sugar cookie this is a five a five ounce jar of it and so i've this i haven't used at all um because i didn't want to mess it up Ooh, there goes samuel sorry samuel okay so um it has like a cute little design inside so i wanted to take some pictures of it before i just like dove in and started stabbing it with my pen so i'm gonna play with this today so i have some nix's notions putty i also have um this putty from tracy's dp world that i'm going to play with today and this one was the um what is it called harvest spice scented putty but it's really cute it's in the shape of a leaf so i'm very very excited oh that smells so good this this putty is a stronger scent than this putty this one's like a light and sweet scent this one is like punch you in the face with fall and I love both for different reasons so I'm going to be using probably one in my single placer one in my multi-placer so we'll play with that have that out here um what else am I using oh my gosh Frederick I forgot about Frederick so I have Frederick here he's this cute little um I don't know if you can see him very well uh but he is a little cover minder pumpkin so I have Frederick to hold back um, any plastic that I need or I might just put him on the corner because I with this last section there's really nothing to like I just take it all off and then I put it all back on when I'm done so Frederick I think will just be I'll just stick him right over here and he'll just be our friend um, so Frederick will live right there so we can just admire him while we diamond paint and then I also have this is just like a backup just in case I have my heart wax from Diamond Art Club. It's mutilated because I this is literally the first one I ever opened. There's there were I put two um, heart wax pads in here and I just keep stabbing it and stabbing it and it's lasted me forever. And I love that it comes in a cute little um, component so I don't have to worry about it like running out or whatever um, or like drying up is what I meant. So I have the heart wax here. But again, I want to try to use the putty, but I'm probably like since it's my first time using this like quality type of putty, I'm probably going to be leaning back on my wax a little bit too because it's what I know and I, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then, yeah, I just have a bunch of tools over here. My, um, this over here is my like diamonds where I, my storage container with all my diamonds in it. So I have this off to the side so you can see that. I'm using the Diamond Art Club um, storage containers. Um, so they look like this. Um, so those are really cool. And I have my stickers on them and then just various pens, rollies. I have my, um, my makeup brush to help scoot, uh, drills down if they're getting stuck when I'm trying to change colors. Oh, and then I have my Diamond Art Club candle. Oh, smells so good. Sea kelp and samphire. I also unboxed this in that other video that you just saw, hopefully earlier this week so um I figured we could light this to set the mood for diamond painting so let me light this puppy up 
There we go. This could be a very entertaining video if, like, I just light everything on fire, right? I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a lefty, so this won't bother me over here. That that will be fine there. I won't. It won't mess me up. Okay, so I guess the first thing I should do is putty up. This is the this is like my janky pen that I use for all the time, and it's got it's got pink wax in both ends. So I think I'm gonna leave this alone, and I'm gonna grab a new pen to put putty in because I don't want to I don't want it to be you know like I don't I don't want to mix what's going on over here what do I got okay so this is what this is a four placer and I don't even know how many placer. I like I like that some of the plastic tips have the number on it. If you've never known that, some of the plastic tips you get will actually say like, is it a four placer? Is it a three placer? Whatever. Um, let's see how many diamonds this lines up with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. An eight placer maybe? I don't think I've ever seen an eight placer. Let me see this again. Maybe I'm wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess it's an eight or maybe more. Maybe it's a 10. Actually, maybe it's a 10. Four, eight, nine or nine. I don't know. I'm scared. I like four placers though. And this has putty or this has wax in it right now. So I will take this out. I'm looking for my murder tweezers. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I'm just going to take this, I, that put there. I keep saying putty. That pink wax in my OG pen is newer than this. This has been sitting out for a while, so I don't mind throwing this this wax away. Plus, like the amount of the amount of wax that you get from Diamond Art Club, the limit does not exist. <laughs> so it's really not that big of a deal um, to throw it away. Ooh, that came out really clean. Okay. So I will just put this to the side. So I don't think about it okay so now we have a clean four placer I feel like the 10 placer is too much like I'm gonna have to do too much straightening and fixing so I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna pop this 10 placer off and I'm gonna place can I get in here let's see yeah mm. I'm looking for just a one of my single placer heads. Cause I feel like the Nix's notions, yeah, this is single placers. I feel like the Nix's notions because of the way it, it is in the jar, it might be best to just do one little stab in there. Cause the, the Tracy's DP world putty, the harvest spice, it's like a pad of putty. So it'll be really easy to get a multi-placer to just like stick it in there. But the Nix's notions is in a cute little jar, so. Oh, I thought I had to sneeze. Oh, I hate that. I hate that when like you're about to sneeze and then it goes away. It's so unsatisfying. Oh, okay. So I have my new placer here. So I have a new single tip and a four placer that's been cleaned out. So let's putty up. I'm going to first load my multi placer, my four placer. Okay, I don't want to mess it up. I'm so sad. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm just stabbing straight down and like wiggling a little bit to try to make sure it all gets in there. Ooh, okay, there we go. Oh, that worked out pretty well. So you can see it's got like a little hole at the bottom of the leaf where I stabby stabbed. And now I'm just using my finger to massage it in there so that way it doesn't... I'm sure I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup just because... Um, when you push down on the diamonds, it kind of splooges out the side. And I'm just using my tweezers to peel off some of that. I'm just sticking that back. Oop, stuck to me. Okay. I think that that's pretty good for now. Um, so that, oh, that smells so good. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in its pouch so I don't get messier than normal. So that can go over there. 
And now I will load my single placer. Now it's kind of a deep jar, so I'm not sure if I just, I don't know if I just wanna stab it in there or if I wanna, maybe I could, here, I'll scoop some off the side because there's like a little bit of a, you can see where they stabbed down to make the little um, Nix's Notions emblem inside the putty. There was a little bit of like overage, so I just pulled, I just kind of scooped it from the side. I'm rolling it between my fingers. And now I'm just kind of letting it, I'm trying to push it into my single placer. And I'm removing the excess, I'm dropping that back in the little pot. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with not messing it up, like the whole point is to use it. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, like you literally, I, I have a bad nose as I've mentioned before. So I, I'm i gonna have to like shove this like up my nostril to be able to smell Samuel, the gingerbread man. I'll put him next to Frederick because they're friends. Um, so yeah, like I have to literally shove this pen into my nostril to smell the Nix's Notions sugar cookie smell, but this one I still have to get pretty close to my nose, but I don't have to shove it all the way in. But I'm okay with that because, you know, we've got our Samphire Sea Kelp candle going. We have smelly putties so I don't want to like overwhelm my senses anyway so it's okay that everything's kind of a lighter scent um I don't need my heart wax right now and all right let's get going so oh I was gonna show you I've had this under my leg see it really does change color I'm just a big dum dum and I thought that it was Florida so clearly it's too um, it's too warm. It needs to change cold, but no, it, my house is freezing. I forgot that. And so, yeah, but because my house is cold, this is going to go to purple again really fast. Like I, it's not warm enough in here to really stay a changed color. See, you can see it's already like fading back to purple pretty quickly. Um, that's okay though. I, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. And sometimes, and that's another thing about the light pad. I was like, Ooh, maybe my light pad will be warm and it'll change it'll help it change colors really fast. Actually, no, my light pad doesn't get hot. Like I don't feel, it's like a little warm on, on the edge, but not like, not anything that would bother me or hurt me in any way. I can be working for hours with my light pad and it's not, it's not burning me or making me feel hot or anything like that. And the cord that this DAC one comes with is extremely long. So it's plugged in like all the way against that wall way over there. It's good, it's all good stuff. Okay. I am starting out with the color I was using when I was working the other day. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to get organized. Okay, I'll move all this because you don't need to see all that. All right. I'm going to pull up this plastic. So again, the plastic is not attached right now because it's kind of the last big section. So I'm just going to like lay it down there and I'll use I'll use that same plastic again to, to like adjust as needed and then I'm gonna push this up ever so slightly Ugh. everything is moving because I just want to have a spot for my tray so anyways I hope you guys are having a good week day whatever whatever's going on um let me know in the comments what you're working on. What are, What is your current whip? Um, a lot of you guys talked about wanting, uh, sorry, if you see me doing that, it's because I have my, I have my screen sharing on so I can make sure that I'm in frame and it doesn't look weird. And so if I don't touch my computer every like 10 minutes or so, it like turn, it like turns off my computer. So I might, you might see me tapping over there a lot. Um, let me make sure. Okay. I have to like have the symbol in front of me or sometimes I forget and I just start going rogue and I just start like putting drills down wherever I want to. Okay. So yeah, let me know what your guys' current, current whips are. Um, I'd love to hear about that. Um, are, are you whipping on something that's actually fall themed or are you like me and you're doing a picture of Greece in the middle of October? Um, yeah, I finished my drills and chills, drills and chills kit really fast. So I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have an, well, that's not true. I do have many, uh, quote unquote fall themed kits, but I just, again, this is a present and I really wanted to 
get it done as soon as possible so that way I can have time to make decisions about framing because I'm, I'm I'm torn I don't and let me know what if you guys have an opinion on this like I don't know if it would be better to give it to them like maybe I could paint the edges but not frame it that way if they if like they just like it like that they could put it on the wall with command strips they're really not those people though they're a little bit more fancy like I feel like they're gonna want it framed but there's so many different frame styles and I've also wanted to try out I've seen a lot of people use those like magnetic bar frames which I know that diamond paintings are heavy but I watched this one girl I it might have been in the diamond art club uh vip facebook group I think that's where I saw this but this one girl had a genius idea so she used the magnet frame you know that just the two bars at the top that are magnetized the two bars at the bottom that are magnetized and the bar at the top has like a little hanger wire thing or like string but what she did was she on the top bar actually like I'm pretty sure she used like super glue or some sort of adhesive glue she basically glued the two top bars to the actual um whatever this is like the overlap of the canvas so I was like because then it's like it's on there you know the top is not coming off but and if you think about it like once it's hung up you're really not gonna move you're not gonna be changing that part of it much anyway so I thought that that was, um, I thought that was interesting. I was like, ooh, I want to try that. But I, I don't know that I want to be experimenting on a gift kit. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do there. I'm torn. And, you know, every time I ask Eric, he's like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, thanks for that. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, trying to make it what I consider a big decision. And you're just like, they'll like whatever you do. I'm like, well, thank you. Um, so, you know. I'm still trying to like mull that over in my head. There's just a little bit of excess on the single placer. So I'm just rubbing that off on my fingers and putting it to the side, clean that up later. So far it's, I was using, I was just using the multi-placer and it was working really well. So that's nice. Every, and the single placer is working well too. So again, the Nix's Notions putty is on my single placer right now. And the Tracy's DP World putty is on my multi-placer on this pen. So I'm only using that today to try to test it out. But so far, both of them are working incredible. Um, but yeah, so I forget what day it happened. I feel like today is, what day is today? Friday. <laughs> After the hurricane, like I feel like I don't know what day it is anymore, which by the way, I'm fine. Every My house is fine. My family's fine. Um, it was scary. It definitely was scary being in, you know, in the hurricane near where it was hitting. Um, you know, the winds were howling, but we are so blessed. We didn't even lose power. Um, uh, pretty much everyone I knew did. My my mom and my stepdad lost power. All of my friends lost power. We ended up being like a halfway house for everybody because everybody else lost power. So the storm hit like the 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 um tropical storm force winds started like Wednesday night Thursday morning ish but by Thursday like in like the earlier morning into the afternoon I'm pretty sure it's been a while so I can't ex exactly remember but basically Thursday is like when it was bad Wednesday overnight into Thursday that's when the hurricane was like really hitting us and uh yeah, the winds were howling and we had at one point, <laughs> Eric and I, we had already like taken our baths, our showers, whatever. Like we wanted to get fully ready. I did all of the laundry. I was like, I don't want the power to go out and us have like things that we still need to do. So we, we bathed, whatever. And then I was like, oh my gosh, Eric, we have to brush our teeth, like whatever. So we run to the bathroom to go like brush our teeth in the middle of a hurricane. And <laughs> cause I was like, we can't lose water. And we're in there and the lights are on. And in the middle of us, like brushing our teeth all of a sudden like that we have like those like old school bulbs above the big mirror in the bathroom it's just like you know a string of like those giant light bulbs and like we were brushing our teeth and then all of a sudden they got very bright like they like it was like a power surge basically like it was like Wah. and I was like oh no I don't want to lose power so we were, we were just like brush we were just like ferociously brushing our teeth while like the power was like surging and it was scary but that was it. That was like the only thing that happened. We did we did not lose power. Um and we're so blessed for that. And then so Thursday, like later on Thursday, once we found out that like all of our friends basically lost power, 
it must have been the worst of it must have been Wednesday night. Now that I'm thinking about it, yes, because um, two of our best friends live like literally not even 10 minutes from our house. They live on the same main road, just like way further down. And so they lost power at around 1230 in the morning. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the worst of it was Wednesday night. And then Thursday morning was just like the aftermath of it all. Like by, by the time everybody was waking up on Thursday, it was already on the East Coast and like leaving Florida. So yeah, so that that's right. Because they lost power in the like overnight in at 1230. And then our other friends who moved here from Colorado, of course, like this is their first hurricane. And, and of course, it's like literally hitting us. It's not even just like hurricane adjacent. It's like you just saw Helene like float past us it was like hundreds of miles off off of the shore of like the western florida area but it's still the storm surge just wrecked havoc wreaked havoc all over the west coast um those coastal communities were just like underwater and then milton actually hits us i think that i landed somewhere near siesta key um and then yeah just not as bad like this i think um more like Naples, Fort Myers, like they got more storm storm surge in Milton than uh like the Tampa St. Petersburg area did. Helene really messed up St. Pete and Tampa during uh for the storm surge reasons. So, but like all, there was debris everywhere and we didn't have enough time, like people didn't have enough time to clean all of the debris and get it all picked up after Helene but before Milton. So that just got like re-strewn everywhere. Um took about a week for people to get power back. Uh, so, so yeah, like Milton hit last Wednesday slash Thursday and this it's Friday now. So this week was like everybody's kind of first week back to reality. And it's just been hard. Like, cause it's like, okay, like we know that, you know, you might've like lost a vehicle or your house is devastated or underwater or, you know, you still don't have power, but get ready to go back to work. You know what I mean? So, and, and again, I'm blessed. Nothing happened to my house or to me. But, you know, because we still had power and because, you know, we have a lot of friends and family in the area, we it told everyone we told everyone to come over. So um, Thursday, after, when it was like safe to drive around, all of our friends came over and stayed with us. Um, and we were just kind of hanging out and, you know, just nothing crazy watching TV um Eric cooked a big dinner for everybody which was really nice he loves doing that he's like truly the hostess with the mostess um, <laughs> um he made he grilled because you know when you're at well maybe you don't know if you're not from a tropical area but in preparation for a hurricane a lot of people when they go buy groceries they buy either non-perishables or things that they can grill because obviously you know when when the lights go out you won't be able to have your electricity but if you have like a propane grill or a charcoal grill or something you can still cook normally pretty much so eric and i before the storm you know we we don't we don't tend to get too many non-perishables like because it you know the hurricane snacks thing if you if you go to the grocery store and buy like all these crazy snacks that you don't normally eat then you like panic eat all of your snacks and you have a stomach ache <laughs> it's like You've eaten nothing of, of nutritional value and your stomach hurts and the lights are out. So <laughs> Eric and I, we usually do um, barbecue stuff. Like if we know, if we know there's a hurricane coming, like we're in the meat aisle. Like we're getting chicken breasts and we're getting steaks. Um, we're getting uh, corn on the cob and like basically we're having a giant cookout. Like if our lights go out we're, we're, we're grilling, um, which is fun, you know, like, and maybe we didn't get it this time. And if, had I thought about it, I probably would have asked him to get it. But like, we have a fire pit in the backyard. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's just like a little circle of like, probably recycled um, cinder blocks, but it's we've used it, we've used it many a time. And so we could have done like s'mores if we wanted. It was so Milton was so rude. So there were like a bunch of memes going around, which I thought were really funny. Um, so after, after Milton, like, wrecked through Florida and left into the East Coast, uh, there were memes going around how, like, basically it brought fall to Florida. Because yesterday it was, like, 65, 70 degrees. It was so nice. I'm wearing a long sleeve right now. Like, it, it was just so funny. Like, like, everyone's like, oh, I would love some fall. And then the hurricane said, like, oh, did you mean 
have the trees fall. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just funny. Um, I know it's hard. Like some people are, some people were devastated by this, by both hurricanes. And like, I never want anyone to feel like I'm being insensitive or making light of the situation. Um, especially because I, I didn't have anything, you know, happen to me during the storm. So like, it's easier for me to be like, ha ha, memes are funny, jokes are funny when I wasn't personally affected. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, I am a Floridian born and raised. I was born the year of Andrew. Uh, I survived 2004 where we got hit, South Florida got hit by like three or four hurricanes within a month of each other. I know what it's like to have a month with no power and, you know, not use your water and have to sleep like in underwear on the tile floor because it's so hot and have the army dropping off like MREs at your front door because the grocery stores are empty and there's no gas to be found. So, you know, I'm not a stranger to that experience. Um, but even in those times, like even when that was my reality and I was like in high school, like, and everybody was like devastated and struggling and it was awful. You just, I don't know. I, I fight every negative emotion with humor and positivity. And I know that that isn't everybody. Um, so I, tr I do, I do try to be conscious of that. Like, you know, read the room, Ashley, if someone's like crying, <laughs> maybe don't crack a joke, <laughs> but I, <laughs> but for, but like, if I'm just like doing me, I, I have to make, I have to make light of it because if not, you'll cry, right? Like you, you gotta accept the situations that you're in and make the best of it or it's going to consume you and drag you down. So I just try to stay positive in those moments. It's funny, like that's another area where Eric and I are really good, like yin and yang with each other. So I am very good in like very high stress situations. Like if it's like a, like this is a big deal, like hospital or devastation or big something bad like I'm really good at being calm through like big stuff but it's the little stuff that will literally make me put me in the fetal position like it's it's the little inconveniences in life and like the little unexpected hiccups that are so insignificant that don't matter that's the stuff that I'm like crying in the bathtub over and Eric's like it's gonna be okay let's think of some solutions to the blah 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 like like truly truly like the little stuff just gets me and the big stuff I'm like oh I got it and maybe it's because like I'm a big picture thinker versus like I don't know I, I don't I'm a detail oriented person as well but like because I think maybe because I'm detail oriented I have a harder time accepting when like those details are not like if I've made a plan I would prefer to stick to that plan but I can pivot if I need to but I typically like need a sounding board to say like well what about this what about this what about this um that was what I was doing this morning. It was, oh my gosh. So today is Friday and I, um, at work, we're starting to pilot four tens. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, so because of the way that my job works, I, I am not able to have like a consistent, um, what's your call it? Like, oh, hold on. I'm trying to move my mouse. Maybe, maybe not. Hold on. Oh, Okay. I was just wiggling my mouse so that my my computer screen didn't go off so um because of my the way my work life is I can't like say okay I'm gonna work four tens but I'm gonna always not work on Wednesdays like Wednesdays is gonna be my day off like I can't do that because there are certain meetings that happen at the college that are like reoccurring on a monthly basis and like it's one Wednesday every month or something like that and I have meetings like that that happen different days of the week and so there is not one safe day where I could be like oh I just will always be off on Thursdays or I'll always be off on whatever day so because of that um every week I have to kind of like basically change my day off and so for this particular week my day off is Friday so I get a three-day weekend which is nice but that's also giving me the allowance of like oh I can fill I can film on Friday because I'm not going to work and before I started this channel, I was kind of like, you know, I love the idea of four times because I love the idea of having an extra day off. But, you know, it's just me having the day off. My husband still has to go to work. Like, I'm home by myself. And I was like, how can I how can I fill my time with something productive and enjoyable 
um, or just like make my life easier. And so again, before I started my channel, I was like, oh, like maybe I'll, that'll be like a chore day for me or whatever. And like, and for me, like chores, if you're watching TV while you're doing them, I'm, it's not to me a big ordeal. Like it's not a chore. Like I can straighten, if I can turn my TV on downstairs and like clean up my living room and wash or like do stuff like while I'm also like consuming a YouTube video or watching TV or listening to music or, or an audio book. I'm not complaining. You know what I mean? It's it, to me, it's a chore. If like, it's such a task that you really can't split your attention. Um, I think that's why I like diamond painting so much is because like I can diamond paint and consume videos, audiobooks, media. I can film. I can, you know, like I can multitask because my brain has to be doing, doing two things at once. Um, I'm tangenting. I'm so sorry. So what I was saying was now that we're doing these four tens and I have like a one random day off. Well, it's not random. I plan it in advance, but I have a day off every week extra. When I was reading all of your guys's comments, you guys were all talking about wanting or being excited about the option of like weekly whip and chats. And I was like, okay, you know, I had committed to one video a week every Sunday. Um, but everyone's really wanting these whip and chats. And I'm thinking to myself like, well, you know, I, whenever I'm not working or hanging out with friends or whatever, doing my regular life, like I'm diamond painting and I love it. <laughs> like I, I love it. It is so relaxing. I love that I can like, cause wh what I was doing before I was diamond painting was like, if I'm wanting to like watch a YouTube video or whatever, like I, I didn't really have like another, I was like probably playing video games, video, I, I'm big into video games and I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point. Um, I still love them. I just obviously don't have as much time to do them now that I've found this new obsession, but I still do like to play with my friends. That's actually how I met the people who moved here from Colorado. Um, I had a friend that lived here who met them through video games and then introduced us and then we became like best friends. So anyway, long story long, uh, n you guys mentioned wanting weekly whip and chats. And at first I was like, that's like, I'm already, yes, I'm already, you know, yes, I'm already working on my kits. So it wouldn't be so hard to just turn on a camera and like do what we're doing now. But it's the editing. It's the, that's the part that, you know, is, I don't want to say it's necessarily like super crazy time consuming. It's really not um, because I'm, it, this is like a continuous stream of me talking to you. So really the only thing that takes time is like making the files on my phone small enough I have to chop them up to be under a gig. Each clip has to be like under a gig. Then I have to upload it to the software that I use for editing. Then I have to like splice it back together. Like if I could just film for an hour or an hour and a half and just post that, I would be like, I would post a whip and chat every day. But there is a little bit of editing that goes into these videos um, and to make them look nice and sound nice and all that. So doing two videos a week before I was working four tens, I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have the time to edit that much, but jokes on me because then I got four tens and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I have a whole day dedicated to like potentially filming and editing. And it's a good use of my time. I can still do chores around the house. Like if I need to go run a load of laundry, I can pause the video, do it, come back, turn it back on. If I need to like do something for Eric or go to the grocery store or go grab, like go out shopping and come back. Like I have a whole day being home, having nothing. You know what I mean? Like I don't have, I don't have quote unquote anything, anyone expecting me anywhere. So what I was doing was this morning I was like looking at the rest of the year. Like I can't, I can't think about 2025 just yet. I mean, I can, but I just was like, let me just look at the rest of this year. What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to accomplish with diamond painting? What videos do I want to make? Like, let's make a schedule. Cause again, I'm very type A. I love a schedule. Um, and so I did this morning, I sat down, pulled up a word document and I was like, okay, if I'm posting two videos a week, one being a something and chat, because even though like, I don't know, I don't know if every week will be a whip and chat, but it'll be a something and chat. Like this is a whip and chat. But also when I do my kit ups and my kit downs, I chat with you guys too. And so I figured if every week there's a something and chat, like kit and chat, whip and chat, post review kit down, like we talk, you, we, you, we talk, you and I talk through all those. So, um, 
that's where I'm kind of leaning towards is like every every Wednesday because whip Wednesday <laughs> every Wednesday I will post a something and chat again whip and chat kit and chat post review kit down and chat <laughs> uh or whatever I'll do that um for Wednesdays and then my Sunday videos will be like everything else like unboxings um small shop hauls uh whatever whatever random musings I have those can be my Sunday videos and because I have this day off every week that I can look forward to I was like okay well I already know like when when we decided to pilot the 410s I looked at my calendar through December and I was like okay these are the days that I I need to take I need to have like as my off days because these are the meetings that I know I'm gonna have I plan my work schedule pretty far in advance so like I even know certain reoccurring meetings that are going to be happening like two months from now which is nice because it made it really easy for me to schedule my off days so that that part of it was already taken care of so then this morning I looked at like my filming schedule and I was like okay when do I want to film these things you know these videos because when I watch I watch a lot of other diamond painters like I am definitely a, a consumer of other people's videos and something that I've noticed that I kind of wanted to steer away from is like recording things too far in advance and you t and if that would be something I would really love your guys's feedback on like do you care like do you care if I film like th for example right now I'm filming a whip and chat for in Santorini but it is what day is it October 18th right this video probably won't go up for like two weeks because I've already filmed stuff for you guys to see before that so but the the thing of it is is when I first started my YouTube channel I got so excited that I filmed a bunch of content for you guys like pretty much in succession before I even had like a plan and I have those posts scheduled for now now that I'm going to be doing potentially two videos a week I'm doing Sundays and Wednesdays as my posting days and sometimes Fridays um depending on like what's going on because we're about to enter holiday season and I know that's going to get fun and exciting and crazy but anyway so I I was like I don't really I don't really love it when I'm watching someone's YouTube video and like you know they're like oh I you know it's you know it's currently October but you're watching this in December you know what I mean like with the chats I want you to feel like you're actually listening to me talk about my like life like my what's happening in the now but if you don't care, let me know, because I've been having a little bit of anxiety about that. Again, like I like I said, the, the, the thing that started this whole conversation was me talking about how Eric is really good at like not sweating the small stuff and I'm good at not sweating the big stuff. This is a small thing that I know is irrelevant and it's going to be fine. But I lay awake at night thinking about my YouTube schedule. That is so stupid. I know. But I just like I I am a huge consumer of YouTube. I am a customer as well as a creator. And I think that that puts me in a unique situation. Because again, like I've been consuming YouTube and watching YouTube for so long that I know what I like. You know, I know what I like from creators and what I don't like from creators. And so I feel like in that sense, I already have kind of a, not a template, but like I have, I have something, I have somewhere to work off of. Like I am not unfamiliar with how YouTube works because I have been a consumer of it for so long. I I don't think I've like I've been like not really using cable since college like I was my parents were huge into cable like we would watch like all the shows live like on TV at the time that it went on you know that was my childhood but then when I went to college people introduced me to YouTube because I had no, I wasn't into it back then like I didn't even really n know what YouTube was in high school like that like I would watch like a funny video that someone posted on YouTube but I didn't I, I didn't have like channels I followed and like paid attention to a lot you know what I mean um and so once I got to college and I got into video games in college because of my friends and who I hung out with that's when I really started being like oh YouTube like you know watching all my favorite people play video games and stuff like I got really into it and then like I just stopped watching things on live tv plus when you're in college like you can't afford cable anyway so <laughs> you're just gonna watch stuff on your phone anyway so um 
yeah, I got really into watching YouTube in college and it's been like that ever since. Like, you know, I have so many different favorite channels for different reasons. Like I, there's, I watch a lot of like, um, gaming channels. I watch, I watch a lot of beauty YouTubers or I did back when that was like a big deal back in like 2016 where the beauty community was like exploding. Um, I watched a lot of beauty, uh, content, which, and again, I'm not someone who wears makeup every day. I'm really not like I, I like wearing makeup for like an event, but on the day to day, I just like, I can't, I can't spend, I can't wake up at 5am to put my face on to go to work. You know what I mean? Like I just, I'm not that girl. That's not my vibe. Um, but if you are that person, I admire you to the hundredth degree because I, again, I still consume that content because I think these people that are doing these channels are absolutely incredibly talented and gorgeous. And I love, I love watching other people do things that they love. I guess that's really like the base of it all. I love watching people be really good at something because they love it and they're passionate about it. Um, and so again, because I've been watching YouTube for so long and I kind of know the type of YouTuber that I want to be because of what I know I like, I am I'm kind of over stressing about the the methodologies in which I present myself to you all. Again, I'm not a shy person. Like I I I can just turn the camera on and start filming. Like that's not a problem for me. But I I want you guys to feel like I care about the like what you're seeing. Like I care about the video quality. I care about the sound quality. I care about what days I'm uploading and does that work for I mean I know not one thing will work for everybody, but I want to get a sense of like, who's actually watching my videos? What's my community like? What are the people asking for? And I want to be nimble to that because like, I, I, I really like this. I'm having so much fun. Like I'm having a problem because I am film. I get so excited. I want to turn the camera on and film stuff, but then I'm like, well, I've already scheduled out like all these videos and now they're not going to see this video for a month. And I personally don't like that when I'm consuming YouTube. Like when I'm watching other diamond painters and they're like, like I said before, like, oh, it's, it's December, but I filmed this back in October. I feel like it's, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not receiving as authentic of a moment from that person. It is off. They're being authentic in the moment they're filming, but like, I don't know. Tell, am I weird? Am I being dumb about this? Tell me if you can tell me we're friends. It's fine. Um, I just overthink that stuff because it's like, I want you guys to have a good time. I just want you to have fun with me. And I don't want you to feel like, oh, like she's just trying to like film everything in advance. So she doesn't have to like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want you to feel like any sort of weird way about that. Um, I'm so close. I like to put my tray on the tops of my drills when there's enough, but I'm, well, I guess I'm kind of there. It's just, it makes it easier for me because then I don't have to like hold it back here. So I like to put an arrangement of drills down so I can just lay it on top. Um, anywho. Oh, well, I'm trying to pick up too many at once. Please hold. Okay. The putty is killing it. I might need to, what the heck? One of the drills got eaten by the putty. Hold on. So yeah, I'm just, oh, I'm probably overthinking it as per usual. Um, but I've just, I want this channel to be really fun and I, and I do want it to be intentional. I think that's the best, I guess, maybe way to say it is I want to be intentional with my content. I don't just want to get overly excited and film like 10 videos in a week and schedule two videos. So that way, like in five weeks, you're watching something I filmed a month ago. Like I want to be current. And that's the other thing too, is I have my Instagram account, my messy girl crafts, Instagram account. And the, I try to post on there every day. Cause I love, I take a lot of pictures, um, just because I, I like to take pictures on my phone. And so like, because I'm, I'm diamond painting almost every day, it's easy for me to snap a photo of a whip or snap a photo of a new tray I got or snap a photo of a can. You know what I mean? Like it's one picture a day. Anyone can post one picture a day. At least like if, in my opinion, if you're a content creator, like you should be able to post like pretty frequently. And not everyone's like that. Like not everybody likes Instagram and like that, that side of creation. For me, I don't know. I just, I think it's another way to engage. And I love pictures and I love progress photos. And I like that, like 
you can scroll back and like see all your progress and all the cool things you've done and it's all time stamped. It's kind of like a mini captain's log. Like today I did X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just like a moment in time and it's like a memory. So I like the picture a day thing. I was actually, I was trying to do that in my real life, like take a picture of something that I did that day. So I could like at the end of the year make like a little video that was like basically a photo a day and it was like a little cute three minute video where it just scrolled through all the photos that I took that year. But it's, it's, you get forgetful, but now that I have a channel, I'm, I'm being more intentional about it and, um, it's easier for me to find things to take pictures of and to post about because I'm like motivated from my channel. So maybe that, maybe I'll get lucky and that motivation will bleed into my regular life because I, I do want to do that for my, per, for personal reasons. Like I would love to like take photos and then maybe once a month on my personal like Facebook page or Instagram, like I could be like, you know, October drop. And it's like all the photos from October because, you know, it, it's nice to actually like use the photos you take. I feel like before I started this channel, I had literally like 11,000 files on my phone, like photos, videos, just random stuff, P pictures of my wedding from like almost seven years ago. Like it was ridiculous. And again, I get it. It's because when you're out and about and like you're hanging out with people, you want to be able to just like, you want to be able to be like, oh, he look at this photo of my cat or oh, look at this photo of my wedding or, you know, people show each other photos in person like that from their phones. But for me, like once I started the channel, I needed my phone's memory for videos. And I just, I had to go through and like take all of that old stuff off of my phone. But again, hopefully that process will motivate me to actually post more of the photos I'm taking or keep or put them somewhere where I can like look at them because I know that I'm going to have to eventually move them off of my phone and not have 24 hour access to them in my hand because I need the space for filming. And again, some people will be like, oh, well just, you know, you don't need to do that. And I know I don't need to do it, but again, I think for me, it's a motivation thing. Like if I can't find motivation to do something, like if I can't find a reason to convince myself of something, I won't do it. That's how it was with the gym. Like I, I told you in one of my previous videos, I've been going to the gym um, pretty consistently. The hurricane was not a good example because <laughs> we had two back-to-back -back hurricanes. But we did go um, during Helene because Helene wasn't a direct hit for the Tampa Bay area. Um, we did go to we only didn't go to the gym during Helene on the actual day that the hurricane was hitting. But we did go around that. But during Milton, we couldn't. We we couldn't go because the day before we were like prepping the house. The Wednesday, the hurricane was like imminent. And then Thursday, we were hosting all of our friends that didn't have power. So we, we, the week of Milton, we really didn't work out at all, which, you know, is, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything about that because we were dealing with, you know, a natural disaster. So it's not like, it's not like we messed up. You know what I mean? It's not like we were like, ah, I'm tired. I just don't want to go. It's like, no, we're hosting literally like t seven people, their children and their pets, um, whatever. So to yesterday, Thursday was my first day going back to the gym after all that. And it was like interesting. I just did cardio yesterday. I didn't do anything crazy. I, I on my cardio days where I'm like only doing cardio, cardio I like to do um, the bike. And I, I just like watch YouTube videos and I sit on the bike for an hour. My goal on cardio days is to do 10 miles on the bike. And usually that takes me an hour. And I put the um, the resistance to 10 as well. So it's like a 10 resistance, 10 miles, 60 minutes. And that's that. T today is Friday and I will be going. Eric, Eric usually gets home from work around like 6 6 30 depending on if he has to stop anywhere like we have a Publix on the way home like it's on the way to our house when he gets off the highway so if he ever needs to grab something or groceries from Publix like he'll stop on his way home but today I don't think I don't think he needs to stop for any reason so he probably will get home around six o'clock today and then we will eat dinner and then we will go to the gym usually around eight o'clock. It's a 24 hour gym, but we typically like to go later. Um, normally we go even later than eight o'clock, but we might be meeting, meeting up with friends at the gym tonight. So we go a little bit earlier because, you know, we don't want to make anybody else be crazy like us and go super late. Um, 
but yeah, so we'll go to the gym tonight and we're doing, I think we're going to do arms tonight. Uh, so that's good. I went to the doctor recently. It was, it was funny. My doctor's appointment was after Helene, but before Milton. So I got very lucky that my appointment didn't get canceled because as I'm sure you guys know, it's so hard to get in to see your primary these days because they're so booked because there's a shortage. And so like, I like, I will do anything to not get my appointment canceled. Like I will literally go to the doctor at like six o'clock in the morning if it means that I can keep my appointment. So I don't have to wait months to get a, a, a reschedule or something. But anyway, I went to the doctor and she, the doctor was like really proud of me for the progress that I've made. I, again, I think in a previous video I mentioned, I've lost like a little over 50 pounds on this weight management program that I'm on. And so she was like, you're doing so good, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, are you like working out? And I was like, yeah, like I go, like I try to go four times a week. Like that's like our, that's what we have scheduled unless something, you know, like a hurricane <laughs> comes up, but that's like what we do. And she was like, what are you doing on those days that you're in the gym? And I said, well, you know, normally we do, oops, I dropped a drill. Um, we normally we do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at night. And then Saturday we do it in the morning and Wednesday night, we were doing legs, Thursday was arms, Friday was core, and Saturday was cardio. And that's what we were doing. And she said, she was like, that's amazing. Like, obviously it's working, you're losing weight, you're doing a great job. Um, But she said, I would, she said, oh, I would like to see you increase your, um, increase your weightlifting. Because with PCOS, and when you're on these weight management you know, GLP-1 pills or whatever, or, or shots, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just putting some release paper down so I can put my tray up here so it's easier for me. Um, so she was like, you know, when you're losing weight in like rapidly, essentially, again, not in an unhealthy, not in an unhealthy way, just like fast, you're like you're, you've made a lot of progress. You can lose muscle when you do that. And so she was like, I'd like to see you increase your weightlifting to more than just once a week. And I was like, okay, like that's fine. So basically what we, we haven't, this is gonna be, is it gonna be this week? Yeah, it is, it is. Um, Eric's, cause we didn't go to the gym uh, yesterday. So Eric's gonna make me go on Sunday to make it up, which I love and hate him for that. <laughs> um, but the what, what we did is we eliminated the core day. Not, we didn't eliminate the core workout. We're just going to take the, some of the stuff we were doing on core day and incorporate it into like leg day and arm day. Like we're going to split the machines and the things that we were doing onto the two days. Like that, that, that way we're still getting a core workout in, but we're going to do, um, in an ideal situation, we would do arms, like, uh, like weightlifting on Wednesdays and Saturdays, um, Thursdays would be legs. No, th sorry. Wednesdays would be weightlifting. Thursdays would be cardio. F Fridays would be legs because we go to the gym with our friends on Fridays usually. So cardio is kind of boring, boring to do with your friends if you're trying to just like plug in your headphones and like just ride it out. So Friday we'll do legs with our friends. And then Saturday we would do the second arm day. So that way there's two days in between. So we're not like you know, our muscles, our muscle memory doesn't lock in as hard. So yeah, Wednesday arms, Thursday cardio, Friday legs, Saturday weightlifting again. That's the current plan. If any of you guys watching are super into fitness or wellness or know anything about PCOS and weight training and all that, I would love to hear anything you have to say. Um, just let me know what your advice is. Um, cause again, what I'm doing right now is clearly working. Like I am, I am losing weight and I am feeling healthier and I'm sleeping better and like all the good things. But I, I just worry about the upkeep and making sure that I'm staying on track, you know, after I'm not in this program anymore. So if you guys have any tips or advice if you're someone who also is struggling with this or knows someone who is and kind of knows what they're doing I'd be happy to hear it um or if you're just like a fitness person you're not struggling with PCOS but you're just like you know here's some here's some moves that you can be doing weightlifting wise that are good for you I feel pretty good about the things that we're doing like I again it's been working so I'm not trying to fix what's not broken but I don't really have a lot of people in my life that besides my mom, um, that's super into fitness 
that I can kind of have as a sounding board. You know what I mean? My mom, my mom, ha like a couple years ago, she got really into working out, but she prefer she prefers like home workouts. Like she was doing a lot of like beach body videos and she was doing, um, she loves to do these challenges, which I think are insane. My mother is insane. I love her, but she's absolutely insane. She'll do a challenge that she found on like Facebook and it'll be like, you know, a month challenge, a month long challenge where at the end of the challenge, you're doing like a thousand, uh, squats or something. And so like every day you, you do squats every day, but every day you increase the number. And I'm like, mom, like you're going to be 60 next year. Can we like relax? Like she like posts these videos on her, on like her Facebook stories and stuff of her doing like a thousand squats. But it's funny because she does them in like, she speeds the video, you know, like when you speed the video up. And so she's just like, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> it's just so funny. My mom's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, oh, I think I might need to put more putty because I'm dropping drills on the multi-placer. Um, but yeah, so I don't, other than her, I don't have a lot of people in my life that are like super into working out like that or like fitness or whatever. And again, I, I work out to eat and to enjoy my life. I am not someone who's like into fitness. I do it because it's a necessity. If I didn't have to and I could be healthy and look amazing and just sit here and diamond paint all day, that's what I would be doing. <laughs> Please know that. Please know that if I did not have to worry about my body, I would not be at the gym. That would not be what I did with my free time if I didn't have to. But some people love it because they like, you know, I feel like runners are like that. Like, like people who run are like into it. Like, it's like, it's like euphoria to them to just be like full, like full open running marathons and all that crazy stuff like it's like it, it's like a euphoric feeling is what it's been described as to me which if that's what you love I'm so happy for you like I'm so happy that you found something that you love that much for me it's hiding in my house diamond painting with my cats watching YouTube but that's just me <laughs> so. um oh it smells so good you know what's good though like I know some people with like putties and like products like consumable products like like things that will eventually run out you know everyone's bragging about oh my gosh like it lasts such a long time and whatever which again you do you don't want something to have to be replaced immediately but also if nothing runs out of anything you're never going to need to buy more like i want to keep buying this stuff because i think it's really quality and good but the only way I'm going to feel comfortable continuing to buy more putty is if I use the putty I have. So the fact that I have to refill my multi-placer in the middle of a giant color blocking section, I'm cool with that. Like, I like that I'm using the material because if you don't use it, then now you're just collecting putty. You, you're you using the same putty that you bought two years ago because you, you don't, like, burn through it fast enough. But you're still buying more putty because you like all the smells and you think it's cute. So it's like, for me, I want to be like, I want to use my stuff. Like, I want to say like, all right, I, you know, I finished this putty. I want to buy another one. And that's why I got, well, this one was, this one was a prize. I, I won this from Drills and Chills from Katie Diamonds and Washi's channel. Uh, one of the weeks um, I actually won Tracy's DP World's uh, putty gift. But the Nix's Notions, I purchased Samuel, the, the sugar cookie gingerbread man. I I actually bought that. And so when I bought that, I don't think I didn't I didn't know that I won that yet. But it worked out because I bought that one specifically as a Christmas cookie kind of scent. That one's very fall, harvest, October. So again, it's seasonal a little bit, but I don't I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be the type of person that just has like watch cut cut to like a month from now when I have like so much putty I can't I don't know what to do with. But <laughs> I don't think I never say never but I don't think I'm gonna be the person who overbuys supplies as far as like consumable supplies like I washi tape um putties waxes what other consumables do we use for diamond painting candles I mean that's not really that's like that's just a relaxing thing to do on top of diamond painting but it's not like for diamond painting um 
I have to remember there's still some of these symbols up under there, but I need to scoot my tray down. Um, yeah, I just don't want to have, like, because again, all the kits that we buy come with stuff too. So like we're buying, we're buying all this stuff when we already get it for quote unquote, not really free, but for free with our kits. So it's like, now I have eight pounds of heart wax from Diamond Art Club. And now I'm actually purchasing from small shops in addition to that. So I have a plethora of waxes and putties to use now, but I want to actually, I want to use it. I don't just want to buy to buy. I want to buy it because I have every intention of like actually using that product. Um, and I, and again, part of the exciting thing about scheduling more videos now and like moving into a place where maybe I'll be doing two videos a week. One will be like a something in chat and the other one will be just like a regular, regular video. Um, by doing that, I'm hoping that I'll be able to consume more of the stuff that I have that's consumable because, um, and when I say consumable, I don't mean eat, like eating it. Please don't eat your putty or your, <laughs> don't eat any of the things that you use to diamond paint. Um, but I mean like it's something that will eventually run out and you'll have to get more. I, um, I don't see myself going out and buying like a million things of putty because it would take me over a year to even finish like two pads of putty because it's you know it does last a long time but don't like I don't want to be that person who's like struggling to pick up drills because I refuse to like stab my putty again because I'm like oh just one more like whatever no if it's not working like perfectly like if it's not picking stuff up really easily if drills are dropping off of my pen I'm breaking it out and I'm refilling it because I don't want to like I want to use the stuff I have now the some the other piece of that is the the non-consumables like the trays like your trays are never gonna quote they're not gonna go bad you know what I mean like there's nothing's gonna happen to your trays like could you accidentally like drop it and break it or if you're moving or if you're taking it on a traveling situation could it crack in a bag yes like you, you could ha need more trays because you've damaged a tray you have but you you're probably not gonna like need to replace a tray like you will need to replace putties and washi tapes and stuff like that so tray wise i really like these the color changing ones and then the wisteria lane one that i got from nix's notions i'm using them now they're great what i like about this one is that i don't know if you can really tell it might be too far away but the the diamonds are smaller than the tracks so they slide really easily up and down the tray and again it's a longer tray so I feel like I'm actually using I'm not having to shake it out as much to like start picking from it again um so I really do like this long style that they do um I'm still on the muni made wait list I hope the custom thing I hope they're still doing that let me know in the chat if you've ever purchased from muni made I was exploring the website and I didn't realize that you could sign up for restock notifications. So I went through and did that. So that was my first step was I went through and I signed up for a bunch of restock notifications for like the large trays and the small trays and like the different colorways or filament options that they had. So I went through and I did all that. So that way, if she, if the owner just randomly decides to like restock the regular stuff, like I can just run in and grab it if I, if I'm there fast enough. But I got on the customs list because I really, really, really want to do a custom with like, I want it to, I want it to say Messy Girl Crafts on the side. And so I really, really, really want to do that. But I'm number like million on the, I'm, I'm like number 500 and something on the wait list. So I know they're super popular and everyone loves them. So let me know in the chat if you've ever purchased from Muni Made before or if you've gotten customs from Muni Made before and like, did you like what number were you on the waitlist and how long did it take you to come off the waitlist type of thing because I was watching I've I've been binging single and placing um Anthony he's a diamond painter on YouTube I'm sure you guys know who he is if you if you watch YouTube for diamond painting he's amazing if you don't I'll link his um I'll link his channel in the description box below I am obsessed I first of all I'm a crazy person when I watch these YouTubers for diamond painting 
I feel like I'm cheating if I just watch the latest video. I want to like know who these people are because I only started diamond painting in July of this year. So uh, like I feel privileged that I'm getting all of the fanciest versions that all these companies have to have. But I know that like in 2020 when diamond painting really took off because of COVID, I know that people like were that's when a lot of these like more bigger diamond painters started their channels and started diamond painting and whatever and you know back then there weren't as many small shops the community wasn't as big the companies were still trying to figure out how to like you know they, they there were there's been so many improvements since like 2020 to now that I like on the youtubers that I like to watch I like to go back to their very first video which I'm sure is so embarrassing for them because they were probably like, oh my gosh, my first video was so cringy and now I'm so much better at YouTubing, which that's how I feel too. Like even just looking at my first video's thumbnail, I like, I like cringe. I'm like, do, like I, I need to figure out if I can actually, I think I can, if I can change thumbnails, I might go back and re-edit my thumbnail for my first video. I can't change the video itself and that's fine. Like, listen, I'm a derpy person. That first video was very derpy. Uh, so that can stay. Like, I, I'm not embarrassed or anything. But looking at, like, my channel history and looking at my videos, the very first thumbnail, I just used, like, a recommended screenshot that YouTube said, like, oh, you could use this as your thumbnail. And I was like, sure, yeah, use that. That's fine. But now that I, like, actually create my own thumbnails, I look at that image next to all the pretty thumbnails, and I'm like, ew. <laughs> I'm just like it was gross so yeah I uh but that's that's how I like to consume diamond painting videos I find a person you know I watch a couple of a couple new videos of a person that I really like that and I find out that I like them and then I go all the way back to whenever they started YouTube and I binge it uh I consume it like it's my favorite tv show and my hope is that I'm going to learn a lot from them and the mistakes that they made and the things that they did right. I'm going to learn a lot by watching those other people back in 2020, 2021, start their channels, figure stuff out, you know, whatever. And then I can, I can learn from that. And I love watching it because I just, again, I love diamond painting. So I like to see all the sneak peeks and the unboxings and the whip and chats. Like I, I like that part of it too. But as a creator now, I'm also gaining knowledge by watching some of those OG diamond painting YouTubers do their thing and, and watch how they've changed and grown over the years. So the person that I'm currently doing that with is single and placing. And I love Anthony's videos so much. He has such a unique way of just going about the diamond painting space. Like um, if you've never watched any of his videos before, and again, I'm currently in my journey of watching every video he's ever created. I am currently in, it just turned 2023 in his videos. So his whole first year of diamond painting was in 2022. And that's when he started making those videos. And so watching him like figure out how to do stuff and what he wants to do with his channel. And like, he talks a lot about, he's, he's someone who actually talks a lot about the creation process, which I very, I again, very much appreciate. And it's why I chose to binge his videos first because I'm new to creating, but he's very much like, you know, oh, like if anyone wants to reach out to me, if you're trying to create a channel, or if you want to learn something or know, like we can chat. And I'm, I've been too nervous to reach out to him because I just am scared. Um, cause this is the other thing too, is I'm watching videos that he posted two, three years ago. So the person that he was back then and the type of content he was posting that back then, I don't know if that's still like, I don't know if he's gotten so busy that like he doesn't really have time for people to be reaching out or, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying I know that for sure. I'm saying I would rather get to present day. Like I'd rather binge all the videos, get to the videos that he's posting present day. And if he's still doing that type of thing, like if his channel is still that channel, that's like, reach out to me or like, let's hang out. Let's talk on the phone. Let's do a live. Let's diamond paint together. Like he's in Colorado. Well, at the time he, I don't know. Again, I haven't, I haven't cheated I don't know what his life looks like right now but at the time of me watching it just turned 2023 he still lives in Colorado and he's doing amazing things with this channel so once I get to present day then I might I might reach out to him and just be like hey can we be friends um that would be kind of cool there and there's and I have a list I have a list of um 
channels that I want to do the same thing with. So like, because my, the continuity piece and how my brain works, like I really want to do one channel at a time, but I just found his and I've been loving his videos and stuff. So I've just been like, again, binge watching pretty much only him. I'll still watch like, if like Diamonds and Washi does like a sneak peek or if like when everyone does their Black Friday hauls, I don't care. I'm watching everybody's Black Friday hauls. I don't care what year it is. Like I like when I first started Googling and searching like like diamond painting videos and stuff, I was watching everybody's like stash videos from the last four years. I was watching everybody's unboxings and um, whatever, like the bigger videos that people make like stash stash stuff, unboxing like hauls. I was watching all that stuff because um, I wanted to know. I just wanted to know. So I watched a bunch of the bigger videos on people's channels first. And again, that's also, I think, how you kind of figure out if you like somebody's channel is like, you know, you find their video because you watch like their most popular video. And then you're like, OK, I want to listen to this person talk for two hours in a whip and chat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're, you're probably <clears throat> you're probably more likely to watch uh, someone speak to themselves in a room alone for over an hour if you already know you like their their personality and like how they handle themselves and how they make how they create content so yeah I'm excited I that's that's something that I hope by 2025 like as I close out this year kind of being a solo act right now like again I don't have I don't have like diamond painting friends um I have my cats <laughs> and my husband which I love they are all they're my best friends but I would really like to meet and connect with more people in the community and even like some artists and some and like some of the bigger creators and just like I want to make friends like I already am really good at like doing online friendships through because because of the gaming atmosphere that I I'm I'm very much in like I know how to make a virtual long distance friend and I know how to keep up that type of relationship sometimes I'm actually better at keeping up those relationships than my in-person relationships which is sad um but yeah, so I, I would, I, this year, like the rest of 2024, I'm, I'm just trying to, my goals are to really just continue to establish my channel, be consistent about filming, get that situation figured out. Cause again, it's such a, it's such a non-relevant thing to be worried about, but I really care about you guys and I want you guys to have a really good experience on my channel. So this year is just like focusing on me, getting my channel right, figuring out like how I want to do things and when I want to do things and scheduling my stuff and, you know, not filming too far in advance that you guys are watching something I filmed a month ago, but then also getting con getting enough videos out there so you guys feel like you're seeing me more often because like once a week is is definitely doable twice a week. Now that I'm working four tens, twice a week is definitely doable. But who knows? Who knows what the future brings after that? Like, I just get so excited. Like, when a when a box arrives with a diamond kit in it, like, I'm staring in a corner full of boxes that I need to show you guys, and I'm like, I literally want to film all that right now. Like, I just want to grab it and show it to you in this video right now and just call it good. <laughs> so, but I want, but I can't do that, you know. I mean, I could. I could. But I won't. So, I, you know, if I, if I film, a, if I film that video and just post it right now well then it's like okay well then what am I going to post later and again this is probably so boring for you guys to listen to but this is how my brain works and again it's the small stuff that I sweat just thinking about like my channel and like again I can't thank you guys enough for the how much how engaged you all have been I read every single comment um and I I just you're you're doing everything that I had hoped um, I didn't really have many, much expectation creating this channel. Like I was like, yeah, you know, I might have like a couple followers and you know, that's, or like subscribers, excuse me. I, I might have a couple subscribers and it, that might be cool, but I'm doing this more for me, la la la. But in the first month of creating these videos, you guys have shown me that, you know, you, you like me and that you want to see more and I want to, I want to do more. I'm a, I'm a huge creative, like a big creative person. Like I'm very, I think it's left brain. I think left brain is like the big creative brain and the right brain is more of like the logical analytical side. Oh my gosh, that would be such a, sorry, tangent. That would be a really funny uh, Halloween costume if I was like the left brain and Eric was the right brain. Cause that is Eric. He is like, 
the logical like a plus b equals c and i'm like um fairies and dragons and you can make up you can do anything you want to do i mean he again he's very encouraging but he's also like a bottom line person but again we're very good at yin and yang we're we both appreciate what the other brings to the table and we both need each other for the for you know anchoring each other in that way but i just like where was i going with the left brain right thing brain thing i can't remember now i squirreled i, I squirreled too hard and now i'm confused um <laughs> I don't know. I just, again, you guys have been so kind in your comments and, and there's, and you know, there's been some people that have said like, I think uh, I just did it. That's so funny. In one of my videos, my, my nose was super stuffy and I kept like, <sighs> and, and somebody was like, I literally had to turn down the volume because you were sniffling so much. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I, you know, and, but I appreciate that feedback because I don't, I don't want you to not watch my channel because I can't keep my bodily, my body together. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that was a funny one. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally, that's true. Um, I said this in, I think in the, what video was that in? Maybe it was the unboxing of the, small shop haul but I mentioned in that video that I when I was like 10 or 11 years old I smashed my nose in the bottom of a pool and um that that's what messed up my nose I didn't when when it happened I didn't break my nose but I I'm pretty sure it, it gave me like a deviated septum and now my nose is for show like I I can I can barely breathe out of my nose like I'm a mouth breather a hundred percent and because my nose is like a train accident inside there like it looks fine but on the inside like I can, I can usually only breathe out of one nostril at a time and uh it's just like funny because I in my regular life like I'm constantly just like like I'm just constantly doing that and I do blow my nose a lot but I, first of all I don't want to blow my nose on camera and then if I have to stop the video every time I have to blow my nose this this video will be like clipped to the gods so I don't know I I am going to be more conscious about my sniffling because I know that that's annoying and especially because if you're watching this video and listening with headphones oh, what what a cringe I know that that's probably like I literally will click off this video right now if she sniffles one more time so I will definitely be more conscious of that. Um, and if I can, if I, if I do a big one, I'll try to like clip it out so you don't hear it or something. But um, yeah, my nose, my nose no worky very well. So that's also why when it comes to like, whenever I do a review related to like a scented, like a putty or a scented candle, like I, like I will preface by saying like, I prefer very strong scents because my nose literally doesn't work like everybody else's. So if I can smell it and I'm saying, oh, this smells it like so amazing and I can smell it, just know that that means it is a very strong scent. And if you are sensitive to strong smells, you probably won't like it. But if I'm, if you watch me smell something and I'm shoving it up my nostril to get a whiff of it, then it's probably a, a normal, a normal to light scent because uh, I can't smell very well. So the struggle is real. Um, yeah, so I've been talking a lot about like my channel and diamond painting stuff. What can I tell you? Oh, I mean, I, to I totally yanked myself from my original conversation about the hurricane. But long story short, everything's fine. I never lost power. We helped out our friends who did lose power and my mom and my stepdad. And everybody, again, it, I'm filming this on Friday, October 18th. The last friend, well, no, my mom and Dave were the last ones to get power and they got power Monday this week. So everyone's back to normal for the most part. Um, I have a couple people at work who were very heavily impacted by the two storms being back to back and like they got water damage in their house and some of the people I work with lost cars and they obviously lost power and they only got it back recently. So again, my heart goes out to everybody who has ever, ever dealt with any natural disaster, but <clears throat> specifically to all my Florida people, I'm thinking about you and, you know, I hope, I hope that recovery is possible and that it's not hard to put in claims. Cause that's the other thing too, is like the worst thing that happened to us is we lost a couple shingles on the roof. Like 
but our roof is old and it really it we really do need to like get a new roof like we've been saving for it um we almost did it this year but now that like the hurricanes have happened i'm like there's no way we're doing it this year like the prices of materials is going to skyrocket they're going to try to price gouge us like better to wait and pray that next year's hurricane season isn't as active and maybe we'll do it sooner in the year before it's hurt like before the hurricane season really picks up but anyway so we um eric's stepdad is a public adjuster and so we had him come visit yesterday which is why we didn't go to the gym he came up yesterday to come see us from south florida he and he was checking on other houses along the coast up towards us so he stopped in st pete he stopped in manasota key and sarasota all that that whole area he has clients that he helped during ian which was a couple years ago and they got re-devastated by these hurricanes so uh he went up and down the coast like helping out people and like helping because a public adjuster I didn't know what that really was until Eric's stepdad started like doing that for a living but basically they're the person that comes out and assesses like your damage and stuff and then they can help you basically they facilitate and they assist with like the process of requesting funding from the insurance company to fix whatever you have broken and they, they do all the assessments and they know all the they know lawyers so in case like let's say your insurance company tries to be like here's five dollars for your house being devastated you know the public adjuster usually has like lawyers on their team who can then step in and, and mediate with the insurance companies to make sure that you're being compensated correctly and fairly for the damage you received um there are some uh people out there it's, there's probably some people that are public adjusters that are schemy um, which is not good. You know, that, that hurts everybody when that happens. But, um, my father-in-law or Eric's stepdad, he's incredible and he's such a kind person and he, he really is out there trying to help people and make sure that they're not being ripped off by insurance agencies and stuff. So he's, he's, he's a good one. Um, so if you're in Florida and you need a name, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll message you. Um, but anyway, so he came up and visited, today's friday he came up on tuesday because yeah because we worked out on wednesday so yeah no he yeah he came up wednesday because we worked out on thursday and today's friday i'm so sorry my again my life is upside down with all these dates so he came wednesday and uh we had dinner and hung out and stuff and he looked at our he got up on our roof and looked and we we had a couple shingles missing um and we have we have some water damage in our garage and but it's a in a weird place like we can't tell if the water damage in the garage is from the roof failing because of the storm or if it's because there's a crack in the stucco on the outside of the garage like we don't know what it is and he didn't know what it was either and he sent pictures to his like head public adjuster boss guy that he works for and with and he also was like i have no idea what that is so we're going to see, um, but once, once he, once they figure out what they want to do and what, what we can do related to the roof, like if, if we should make a claim, if we shouldn't make a claim, like he's going to go speak to his, <clears throat> to his supervisor and figure out what the best plan of action is for Eric and I for the roof. Cause we do need a new roof and now there's shingles missing. So if it continues to rain, I don't want rain going into my attic, you know, or <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's the second roof that lost shingles. So my so I have a two story house and um the first story, the only like first story roofage is over my garage. So out this window is a roof. And so like you could literally walk out this window and stand on my roof above my garage. There's no damage on this part of the roof. I didn't lose any soffits, I didn't lose any gutters, but the top roof above me, that's where all of the shingles came off. So I don't know I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they want us to do a FEMA thing. I don't know if they want us to do a, an insurance claim. I don't know. So we're waiting to hear back from Eric's stepdad to see what what advice he can give us. And if, if we should just bite the bullet and just keep saving for a new roof and just let the shingles be what they are. Because the thing is, is this house was built in 2005 and that is the original roof. So if if we had a roofer come out and assess the damage and say well 
the problem is is that even though normally you could just patch shingles like you could just do a patch job so that way the water doesn't come in through the tar because it's an exposed roof in those areas the shingles that are on the roof we currently have they don't make they there's a potential that they don't make those type that's this kind of shingle anymore or whatever and so you can't really just patch it because it's it's not gonna match and i'm not talking like color match like i don't care if i have different colored tiles up there no one can see it anyway but like meaning like it's not going to be a good fit and the water could still get through because it's not it's not a matching shingle to the to whatever version of shingle that is on there and if the if we get a roofer to come out and the roofer says that then we might actually be able to put a claim in for our roof because we can't just patch it we have to replace it and the reason the damage happened in the first place was a hurricane two back-to-back -back hurricanes so we'll see. I'm not trying to like be like skeezy or get free money or anything like that. But also like, I feel like what's the point of having insurance if you're still like, if you're not going to use it, if you're just going to pay for it your whole life and then never use it. I don't know. But I'm going to take the advice of professionals. Like I'm not making any decisions by myself because I am not an expert in any of that. So once, once Eric's stepdad gets back to his like home office and talks to his boss we'll see what they decide about the roof um if not we probably will end up replacing it next year we thought we thought our insurance company was gonna not renew our policy this year unless we replaced it but they didn't put that in the renewal letter we already got our renewal letter for our um for our home insurance policy <clears throat> and it it just was like here's your renewal sign it pay it whatever and i was like oh we might get another year with the roof we have. But the only thing that freaks me out is that there's now missing shingles, which I know many people probably have tons of shingles missing from various storms, not even hurricanes, just like wind storms. And they just don't replace them because they're like, whatever, like we can't afford it or it's not, it's not leaking or I don't know. Maybe, we, oh, you know what I should do? I should, I should hire someone to go up there and just use the flex tape, the flex seal tape, just slap it on there. There was a person, there was a video going around of a person who um, used the flex seal foam. They sprayed, so they sprayed the flex seal foam around their door jam. I think it was, I, I think it was a business or maybe it was, I don't know if it was a private residence or a business, but I think it was a Harley Davidson shop if I remember correctly. And they, or some sort of shop and they sprayed the flex seal foam around all of their door jam so it like puffed up and it like sealed in the door ooh, sealed in the door jam and then on top of that they sprayed something else to like basically double seal it and it didn't leak and I was like that is the best flex seal commercial I've ever seen in my life like if it's gonna prevent hurricane storm surge like who wants to fill sandbags just <laughs> flex seal every opening in your home um I'm just kidding. Like you should, you should use all available preventative measures, but I just thought that was really cool. So anyway, maybe, maybe I'll hire someone to go on my roof and slap some flex seal tape over the exposed shingles and call it a day. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're getting closer. I think what I'll do, cause this video is already incredibly long. Um, I'm going to finish this color so that way I can like be done with this color, but then I will wrap up this video. Um, I've still got a little bit left, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, in case you're, you're like me and you like to have a warning before something's about to be over. <laughs> I always yell at Eric. We'll be, we'll be in the office. His desk is over there with his computer set up. My desk is right here in front of me. And we'll be like doing our own individual things at our desks and it'll be like late. Um, and he'll be like playing a video game or watching a show or something on his computer. And I'll be like do diamond painting or I'll be like watching a show while diamond painting and then he'll just like tap me on the shoulder and be like, all right, babe, like it's time for bed. Let's go. And I'm like, I didn't get a warning. Like I, I'm in the middle of the middle of everything. Like my stuff is everywhere. The video's halfway done. Like the video only is halfway in. I'm like, I, I'm like, you can't just, you can't just sneak up on me and be like, let's go to bed. Like I need a 10 minute warning like a child so now he literally he he's accommodated my crazy self and he literally will do that so like if he knows like he only has 10 minutes left of his video or his show that he's watching he'll he'll look at me and he'll be like hey ash just so you know like 
10 minutes we're going to bed and I'm like okay so then <laughs> I start to like clean up and I'm like I'm watching my video that I'm still like watching or whatever but I'm starting to pack my stuff away I'll blow out my candle I'll start you know getting things put together um it's just like because I'm a child and if I'm not good with transition so if you just like rip me out in the middle of my project if you just rip me away from it I'm I'm pissed off but if you give me time to wind down I saw a drill over here that looked like it was out of place sorry when I look at the drills from this angle you can really tell how straight or not straight they are so sometimes I like to do a little bit of correcting if I like glance up and I see something crazy. Did I get it? I think I did. Now I'm just finding others. Anyway, so yeah, so this is your 10-ish minute warning <laughs> that the video will be over soon. Um, I just want to wrap up this color. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Sometimes like I don't press the thing down right and it's got weird gapping so I can't pick up the extra drill so now I have to just put down what's on there and then I have to scoot stuff around but that's fine that's okay so um yeah post hurricane life everything's fine um my campus is fine you know no, no like truly critical major damage on the on on the campus I'm on we have other satellite campuses and I don't know how those all fared but the campus that I work on is fine so that's good for me I guess um and yeah this week was just kind of like a recovery week for everybody everybody at work was super flexible like hey like if you need to work from home or if you need this or if you need that like because some people like again some people lost their home some people lost their cars some people were devastated so my job is really good about like being a good human being you know people are good at being good people and not making all these crazy expectations um for people who might have been going through a lot so this week was I don't want to I don't want to say this week was a wash but this week was definitely like a getting back to normal situation like people were still dealing with a lot of stuff so my job was accommodating which was nice for those who needed it um the only the only thing that I don't want to say the bad thing but the only thing I have to be careful about with this tray is because the walls are very low drills can bounce out of here easier like when I have to put my drills back in the container sometimes they'll fall out just because of the like it's high and then the you know what I'm saying gravity so sometimes the drills will bounce out of here so I just need to be careful about that um just need to be careful um, but it's a good, it's a good tray. I like it a lot. I wish that it was, I wish the filament was more sensitive to color changing. Like I wish like just touching it like this would make it change color, but you really, you really do got to like warm it up. So again, if I went outside, it would probably change just from the temperature outside. But, um, because I'm inside and my house is cold, I don't have and I don't, I was like, you know, I don't have my fan on. I didn't want any like background noise in my video. So I don't have my fan on. It's just like my air conditioner. It kicks on whenever the temperature in the house gets to a certain level. Um, but yeah. So what's going to happen for the rest of the week? It's Well, it's Friday. So this weekend will hopefully be pretty chill. Um, oh, fun story. So during the, so one, one, my two friends from Colorado one of them the wife is uh, a vet tech that's like her job and she actually had to work during Milton because obviously like people people are awful humans and they abandon their animals in the storm or there's just random animals outside that are just like need help or whatever and so she she works for an emergency vet so they're 24 hour and so she was she was working during the storm and whatever and while she was working I guess I don't know if someone if like a customer or someone brought this animal in or if they actually found it somewhere around their own building but there were there was a kitten found in a storm drain and it survived and right now because of all of the extra animals that have been abandoned or just found or whatever the shelters in the area I guess like are not taking a lot of new animals especially ones that are like potentially gonna be sick or like 
baby. I don't know. They're just, it, everyone's full. Everything and everyone is full right now. So my friend, she took the kitten in and it's like baby, baby. Like she's bottle feeding this kitten. So on Saturday, um, well, okay, let me back up. So I went to my friend's house on Tuesday night. We were, we were going to just like hang out and watch TV and, and do Lego together. Um, cause it, you know, I also have my Lego obsession. I'll have to talk about that in a different video. Um, but <clears throat> I went to my friend's house and we were, we were doing Lego together and she was like, so look what I have. And she pulls out this baby kitten and she tells me the story. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, it's so cute, whatever, whatever. And, uh, she was like, yeah, she was like, do you like, like, I'm trying to find a home for it. Like I'm fostering this kitten. Like, do you want it? And I was like, oh man, I was like, I can't, I have Kohu and Winnie already. Trust me, I would absolutely have taken it. It's just that like, I'm kind of waiting to get another one. I, I kind of want to wait for, um, for something to get another one. So <clears throat> whatchamacallit. So she was, I was like, you should keep it. It's so cute. And she only has one cat right now, but she does live in an apartment and she works nights and, and, and her husband works um, at Sam's club and he works like during the days. So it's just like hard. Like you don't want to necessarily bring an animal into an environment where like they never get to see anybody and stuff. So I get it. Like they've got a lot going on and they already have a dog and a cat. So it's fine. But she was like, yeah, like I really wish I could find someone who I know is going to be like responsible and going to take care of it and whatever. And I was like, oh, I was like my mom. <laughs> so I call, I immediately, um, I immediately call my mom immediately I FaceTime her on on Facebook Messenger and I'm like mom I literally have a kitten in my like I had it in my hands and I was like mom I found your new baby and she was like stop it like no I'm not gonna like you know she's like fighting me on it I'm like no like look that like this is your new cat and she's like because remember after this kit I'm doing I'm gonna be kidding up the meeting which is uh the kit with the three cats sitting on the three little um tree stumps in the forest and that is to kind of commemorate like for my mom or like it's it's kind of like an homage to her three black cats that she lost um she, like every year for the last three years she's lost one cat one of those three cats so um lucky went first then frenchy then frankie went um earlier this year i think so this year, 2023 and 2022, she's lost a cat like every year and it's been so hard for her. So she only, she's down to one cat right now. And my mom is not a one cat girl. She's not. She's, I, growing up, we always had many cats like in the house and that's just like who they are, um, that they just like love animals and they just love cats. So I was like, mom, this is a baby. Like, this is like a, like less than two pounds still needs to be bottle fed like baby 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 kitty and so my mom it was funny because when I called her she was cooking and so my stepdad was like holding up the phone for her so she could look at the cat and the cat like sees her and she's the cat's meowing and calling to her and I'm like mom she was found in a storm drain and you have to keep her and she loves you like I, you know I was like I was being a manipulative little you know what so I was like, mom, what if on Saturday I bring her like, so you can meet her? Cause she's like, well, I want Dory to meet her. Dory is the cat that she still has. She's a, she's a, a Tory, like a Calico Tory, um, cat. And she's like, and, and Dory is notoriously like a grumpy cat. She's like a mean grumpy cat. She's gotten a lot sweeter in her old age, but like, she's such a grumpy cat. So, um, She's like, well, we need to see if Dory likes her. I'm like, Dory's not going to like her. You can't let that be the reason you do or do not take this cat. She's like, I'm going to know. Like, I'm going to know when I meet this cat, if this cat is like my baby. And I was like, okay. So my friend who's the vet tech, again, she's watching the cat. So the cat's at her house right now. So Saturday at like noon, we're going to bring the cat over to my mom's house so she can meet the kitten and decide if she wants to keep her or not. But I can already tell you if I have anything to say about it she's keeping that cat. So that's fun. That's exciting news for Saturday. So I'm going to be heading to my mom's with my friend and introducing her to potentially her new baby, which is so fun because if she does, if she does decide to keep that cat and then she gets the meeting diamond painting for Christmas, it's going to be so full circle. I should write this down so I can put it in my pitch 
for her to keep the cat. I'll be like, listen, mom, okay, it's perfect. I'm making you this diamond painting to commemorate your beautiful babies that you've, that have passed away. And then you can put that up in your living room and they will be watching over you and the new baby. And it's like they gave their blessing and you know, it's, you know, I, I'm the worst. I, I will manipulate my mom into keeping this cat, but it's because I know she really wants it. And she's just like afraid of change. So that's literally how we've gotten like every, every cat almost that we have had. It was me staying up till three o'clock in the morning, crying, begging them to like, let me keep it. And then they did let me keep it. And it's never, it's never gone wrong. Like every cat that I've like begged for us to keep has been like a family staple. <laughs> so I, I will use my good, my good history. I'll be like, mom, when have I steered you wrong on cats? She's going to be like, never. I'm going to be like, yeah, you're right. Never. Um, so yeah, that's going to happen Saturday. We're going to introduce my mom to the new baby and hopefully, hopefully she'll keep her right then and there. She's too, the kitten is too little. Cause again, she's like literally still being bottle fed. She's too little to, um, be, be spayed. So we will have to wait a little bit for that. So I think what will probably happen is my mom will meet the cat Saturday, decide if she wants to keep the cat. And then if she does want to keep the cat, my friend will probably still hold on to her until she's her she's heavy enough to like go through that surgery. And then once and my mom will probably just like pay for that. It's like spaying a cat or neutering a cat. It's like a 100 bucks at it's called planned pethood, which I think is so funny. Um, not planned parenthood, planned pethood. So she'll go to planned pethood, uh, get the cat neutered or whatever spayed. And then we will, and then probably after that is when my cat, or when my cat, when my mom will take the cat into her home is my guess. Um, but we can figure out, I'll, I'll keep you updated um, depending on what happens Saturday. I hope I can report back that my mom has a new baby in the house, but we will see. Um, I think it'll be good for her. My mom doesn't have, like, she's a stay-at-home mom. Well, I mean, I say stay-at-home mom. I'm not in her house. Like, <laughs> she doesn't work. Um, and my stepdad works from home. So my mom needs some entertainment. She's really good at entertaining herself. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I think she needs, I think she needs a new baby. I think that that would cheer her up and give her something to distract her um, from obviously the loss of the cats that she has lost over the last couple of years. So I just think overall, it's a really good idea and that'll be fun. And then also, so that's happening Saturday around like the afternoon time. And then it, Saturday evening, um, me and all my friends, the same friends that I brought to my house during the hurricane, me and all my friends will get together and we do, we do a, a D and D night together, um, usually every Saturday. So, um, the, the wife, the vet tech that I was just talking about, she is like a really good DM. If you, if you're not familiar with like nerd speak, DM is dungeon master. Uh, and so that is the person who basically creates the storyline of the game and helps guide the players through and like creates the scenarios and the scenes that the players have to work through. And like, you know, basically is the creator of the story and then they react to to how we react like they provide us the environment we interact with the environment and then based on how we interact with the environment the dungeon master will alter our reality or introduce things to you know what I mean like they kind of control what's going on based on how we interact with our environment and so she's really good at it and so we've been doing that like so my friends moved here from Colorado in April of this year um and the moment they got here, we started doing a campaign together. So we've been, we've been doing this since, yeah, since like maybe, maybe we started in May cause they, when they moved in, they had to like get settled and stuff. But shortly after they arrived, we were, we were playing D and D together. So yeah, every Saturday is like our, our friends day. And so we, we all go to someone's house, we eat dinner together. We play with the kids. Cause my, our, my other best friends who also play D and D with us, they have twins. So like we basically head over, play with the twins, get dinner together. The twins usually go to bed because they're they're five, about to be six. Their their birthday's coming up at the end of the month, but they're five, so they go to bed at like eight, nine o'clock, and then we play until the wee hours of the morning. Which, as as someone who is now over the age of thirty, man, I get 
my body don't work like it used to. Let's just say that I get exhausted, but we'll play until like one or two o'clock in the morning. And all of us have like one eyeball open and we're all like bloodshot eyes. And we're like, this is so fun. Can't wait to do it next week. <laughs> it is fun and we all enjoy it and we continue to torture ourselves. But man, starting so late definitely is taxing on the body, which is a good thing that we do it on Saturdays because then Sunday everyone kind of just takes, spends time with their own family and like does their own thing and like recovers, <laughs> recovers from staying up so late. So yeah, my, my plans for tomorrow are uh convincing my mother to adopt a kitten and playing dungeons and dragons with all my best friends and with that good timing oh i lied there's three more drills hold on but with that um we are at the end of this whip and chat uh it has been oh my gosh this video is going to be like two hours long i hope you like that because <laughs> that's a really long video but I mean you guys said you wanted whip and chats and some of the comments also said I like a long video and I have a hard time finding people who post really long videos I don't think every video I post ever is going to be two hours but my whip and chats like vibe with me hang out with me I literally I'll show you I only did one that was let me put this away so I don't make a mess um I literally did one color that for two hours. I probably would have gone a lot faster if I wasn't talking, obviously, but what's the fun in that? Um, ooh, ooh. They get, see, because again, the walls are so short, they tend to be like jumping beans. Did I get it all? I did. See, and that's the, that's another really good thing about these Nyx's Notions trays. I don't, I very rarely with this have to use my makeup brush to like push them down. With my Diamond Art Club trays, the, the the grooves are so close together that they like just fit the drill size. So I have to tend to do this a lot with, with the Diamond Art Club ones to get them to go back into the container. This one, I almost have the opposite problem. Like if I tilt this too drastically, they like want to fall out this way. So I have to like, I kind of like do it at an angle like this and then slowly like elevate but this these trays I am really enjoying them my only thing that I would say is I wish that they were more sensitive to like I like I wish I could change the color just by like holding it like this but it's not it's not that sensitive unfortunately but it's okay I I can just sit on it like I did in my last video and it'll work out just fine um so let me show you the progress I made let me just scoot this over so I don't drop it Oh, Frederick, make sure you're facing the camera. So there you go. That is the progress I made. So all of all of this blue up here um, is what I did. So that color is completely done except in this section. So this little quadrant I'm saving because I want to do a time lapse um, of this to post as a short. But I'm going to probably for the rest of today since I have the day off and I'm just chilling. Uh, I'm going to film another video later. If I... Okay, so my goals for today is to finish this whole section and then film the short for this section. And if I can get that all done in a reasonable amount of time today, I will film my my post review kit down of either either um I'll either film it today or maybe on Sunday, I'm not sure, but my goal is to finish this kit this weekend because if I can do that, it means I can get going on my mom's kit the meeting faster which I also want to get through really fast because number one, that's a Christmas present. And number two, I got in a package. I'm staring at it and it's haunting me. I haven't opened it, but I'm staring at a package. It's my first purchase from Distracted by Diamonds. And it's the kit that I want to do for um, jingle drills. I Originally, I had no intention of doing jingle drills because I was like, I think it starts November 15th and it goes till Christmas. And I was like, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to get the meeting done before November 15th or near November 15th. Because I thought this I thought this was going to take me a lot longer. And then I thought the meeting was going to take me over a month. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to have time to kit up something for, for jingle drills. But then I blazed through this canvas. And so now I'm thinking I will do jingle drills. And the one that I want to do for that is in that box over there. And so I'm very motivated to get through all these present kits so I can do that one for myself. <laughs> so yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for 
two hours <laughs> whipping chatting. I hope that you had fun. Again, in the comments, please share if you liked this uh, format, if you like this camera angle, let me know what you're working on. And um, again, candles smelled great. Samuel, the gingerbread sugar cookie worked amazing. Um, the putty from Tracy's DP World worked amazing. This I used in my multi-placer, this I used in my single placer. Um, the trays were amazing. And as always, Diamond Art Club kills it with their kits and this was amazing and everything was great. So um, thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.